And hey, what is going on YouTube? It's Jake here, and we're uh, coming at you with another video where we're talking about computer science. Today we're going to talk about Perl, and if Perl is still a viable language to use in 2024. I can tell you that I am one of those developers that uses it, yes, for some legacy systems, but is that the only reason why people use Perl these days is for legacy systems? Does it have a use case in your programming arsenal? Well, let's take some time to talk about it and see if that is the case. I can't believe I'm saying that I'm making a video about Perl, but that's what we're doing, guys. If we want to talk about Perl, let's just say real quick that it is a pretty old language. It's got some uh, years on it. 36, 1987. Not as old as C but it is pretty freaking old and this language i'm not gonna lie if it was written 36 years ago when it was first coming out and getting used it was probably ahead of its time it is pretty cool um i like to think of it as a more enjoyable bash a more enjoyable scripting language so uh i don't know imagine imagine you're making bash scripts all day as like a uh systems administrator and you just need a little bit more functionality. You know, you maybe you want to do some stuff with the variables. With Bash, it can always be a little crazy with, you know, setting stuff. And I get set as like an environment variable. Or um, just the for loop syntax. I don't think I could ever, ever memorize what a Bash for loop syntax should look like. Every time I open up a for loop in a, in a Bash script, I'm like, okay, I got to open up Google here, make sure this is uh, looking right. Syntax is terrible. So you're making scripts all the time and you want a little bit better syntax. Perl was ahead of its time with that. Uh, there's no types in Perl, but there are three, I guess you could say, semi-types. They have things called uh, scalars. So you know if I like have like an integer, this like this this variable here line. Okay. It could be an integer, it could be a string, it could be a float, it could be a pointer to something. It's just a single type. There's nothing attached to it. You could also have a uh, an array. You know, you can have an at sign and that is declaring an array. So there's a second type there. And the third type is a hash, which would be a percent sign. So not as strictly typed as a language like C and uh, a little bit more control over your variables instead of like bash. So it's kind of like a mix between an OOP language and a scripting language. So that was like kind of the inspiration there. And why would I use this in 2024? Well, I can tell you right now, if all this is what I'm saying right now sounds a lot like Python, that's because, yeah, Python is pretty much uh, a de facto modern version of this. Python is a scripting language and Python has no types, really. You can just declare a variable however you want. Um, I'm sure that it's just a natural progression of what is going on here but so another another cool thing about language before we hop into what specifically Perl does that is still ahead of its time but I do want to say that one they have a community page still that's up and running uh still getting updates in 2024 so that is cool they have a strawberry ver uh, strawberry Perl version of Perl which is like your uh, MSI installable version on Windows or you can just do a uh, pseudo app git install Perl on Linux. You can download it for uh, cross cross platform. <laughs> so many words. And they also have a uh, a packaging system using like CPAN. Uh, I like CPAN M. It is what it is. Some of these packages though, you're gonna go and like look for something, and you're gonna be like, oh, oh, oh last edited in two thousand three. Oh my, oh my god. So uh, some of these packages are freaking old. And I'm not saying they're going to work, um, but usually you see Pam in something, it's going to break. You look in the build file, like, oh yeah, that, that function right there is deprecated. Hmm. Oh, and let me fix that one. And then you get another freaking error. Oh, that function's also deprecated and you have to, you know, build, build from scratch sometimes. But that just means you have more control over your, everything is built in house with Perl. Okay. You're trying to, you're going to try to install something open source. Unless that module is like god tier and used by everyone, oh man, like no, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take that open source module and, and convert it to work for your uh, specific organization. 
Anyways, so they do have a packaging system, which is quite cool. Comes out of the box with, with Pearl. Um, all right, so what am I going to use Pearl for? Well, we're going to use it for language processing and we're going to, or word processing. And we're going to use it for just calling scripts and processing the outputs. And that is pretty much the modern, the modern thing that Perl does that is so simple and so useful is acting as that glue between external applications. I think uh, there's a good article, Perl RE, dude, this whole thing is beautiful. I've been in some Discord calls where we've just like talked about how beautiful this page is. Even if you don't program in Perl, this is the um, regex of Perl and how regex is working Perl. And it's pretty much a de facto standard. I mean, any language that you kind of work in, they're going to use some sort of, uh, some sort of combination inheritance of, of, of this. I guess all regex will circle back to this and all, all that jazz. So there's one operator that Perl offers here, and it's this, uh, it's the swiggle, dude. It's this equal swiggle sign, okay? That is the start of a regex expression. I'm going to perform a regex on this line here. Super cool. Super cool. Uh, you can imagine a big text file, a big command that you're running, um, and you want to do something with that output. Yes, you can use grep. If you're doing a command line syntax, you're doing like a, a one command. If you want to just do an endless pipe, do some functional programming that way. Sometimes, though, you need some programming logic um, if it's a complicated case. Yes, you can grep for strings, but sometimes you want to do a little bit more than just grep and, and see the string. You want to do something automated with it. Um, so let's back out of here and let's just call a command that has a lot of output and see what Perl could do for us. So one of the first message, first command just, that just works out of the box that has a lot of output is uh, dmsg, dude. Get all my kernel messages that are happening right now. I think there's a, a man for dmsg. What is this guy? Oh my gosh. dmsg. <laughs> Or control the kernel ring buffer, dude. So we can just read what's happening in, in kernel code. And that's always obviously going to have a lot of messages, a lot of stuff to look at here. And if I was trying to do something with this, yeah, I could grep. Maybe I want to do something automated. Maybe I want to do something with that data. So I can come into this function here and I can call that command line variable just using backticks. Super easy, uh, definitely not as easy as if you're using C, if you're using Java, or anything like that. If you want to get its output, you can save its output as an array. So that means each line of the output is going to be its own uh, its own string variable. As you can see here, we're saying for each line in the output, we're going to do something there. And then we're going to perform a regex on it. Maybe I just want the TCP stuff that is available in each line. I just want to get TCP stuff. Um, this is like a regex that just matches all the random nonsense in the beginning. I'm looking for TCP and then everything after it. Uh, and when you use parentheses in a regex expression, I think this works with any regex, but you can actually like, you know, the next line or I guess in the context of what you're doing, the parentheses are actually saving variables in the form of one and two. So if I had more parentheses, that's gonna be starting at dollar sign one. That's gonna be dollar sign two. And if I had more parentheses, it'd go on and all that jazz. But uh, yeah, come in here and we can just print some stuff. So let's let's do that. It is a scripting language. So, um, you know, we're just gonna type in Perl and then we're gonna type in the, the file we wanna do. And bam, we got our TCP lines without the numbers and stuff in the beginning, without that time. And the reason why it doesn't have that time is because it wasn't in a parenthesis if we look back at that. Um, so that's like matching all the time stuff, but we only want to get the TCP part. 
if I got rid of that one, you would see that it only got the messages without even that TCP. So pretty cool, pretty cool. We could do this FS cache as well. Let's try that real quick. I think it was just uh, FS cache. Yeah, it should work. Well, I think it actually had a colon as well at the end of it, but we'll see if this works. Whoa. Yeah, we're going to have to put a colon there. And bam, we can get some of that, that FS cache stuff that was happening there. I got the... Ugh. Kind of right, kind of like that. So that's cool. And I mean, it's a programming language. So if, if you wanted to do some processing with that, you then have these variables and you could do something with it. I don't want it to be uh, an in-depth look at Perl because, you know, there's other videos that exist for that. This is just like why you should use Perl in 2024. And I would say literally the short answer is for running external programs, getting its output, and parsing that output and doing stuff with that output. Super helpful there. It is compatible with uh, C libraries. It's very compatible with C. You, they, have, they have like this thing called the XS. Uh, if there's any DLL files from C that you wanna run, you can kind of like use like a little use statement up here. Um, you know, you'd be like use some DLL um, type, of, type of thing like my, my DLL.DLL and it could, it could load it run C code in Perl, uh, very, very modular like that. But that is Perl in 2024. Let me know what y'all guys think. This is the better camel, okay, OCaml. It's got all the hype. I know Jane Street is thinking they're cool using OCaml, but guys, Perl was the original camel. It's the better camel, okay? Start coding out. Peace.